This is Primetime News on UIV Television and Radio 101.7 FM with me, Elizabeth Momo. First, the headlines. Vice President Dr. Jules De Jello says the second edition of the National Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Fair is a direct response to creation of the 5,000 jobs. And this conference is no doubt a practical step to realizing that vision of creating 500,000 jobs. Some citizens express dissatisfaction over enactment of the Finance Act 2024. It's sad. Why are you this guy talk here? Before a parliamentary had to go see law, they make law. Before then, they get free money. Now, I made it go make that kind of law. Then, now, we, even now, we tax no day. People that destroy, people that they suffer. Director of Training and Strategy in Parliament, Mohamed Alpha Jallo, calls for a strategic plan to address human trafficking in the country. Organize it in for our members of parliament. You know, we have a lot of new members of parliament, but also there are old members of parliament who also need information on anti human trafficking. Now for the full news. In prioritizing youth empowerment and economic growth at the heart of governance, the Office of the Vice President has organized the second edition of the National Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Fair since commencement in 2022. Well, the Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Mohamed Jul Dejado, says the second edition is a direct response to the vision and goal of government to create 500,000 jobs in the next five years. Reports. The second edition of the National Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Fair's theme, Creating Employment, Entrepreneurship and Growth Opportunities for the Development of Future Ready Youth, echoes the nation's commitment to empowering its young minds. Addressing the vital role of youth in shaping Sierra Leone's future, Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jul Dajalo says, the fair is a commitment to empowering young people and creating the environment for them to thrive, build careers, and contribute to growth of the nation. Among the big five, job creation stands as the number two priority just after fix alone. And this conference is no doubt a practical step to realizing that vision of creating 500,000 jobs. This need is viewed as a building block for job creation. That is why this year we have included the Job Creation Conference as part of the four days event. And that will no doubt lead us to begin to put together the mechanics of a potential job creation strategy that will lay a ground path for how we intend to provide opportunities for young people to access jobs in the future. NIF is a direct response to His Excellency's vision to create jobs for young people. Esteemed international development and private sector partners and five ministries are standing shoulder to shoulder with the youth, offering pathways to success. General Manager of Sonoko Sierra Leone Limited, which is the lead sponsor, Mark Pritchard, is proud to support Sierra Leone's commitment to nurturing the talents and ambitions of its young generation by providing opportunities to excel and contribute to development. Over 30 years in Africa, I've been just amazed at the ingenuity, the passion, the potential of young African talent. Talent that is just waiting to be harnessed. And this is why events such as the one this week here in Freetown can be an amazing catalyst for growth and opportunity. As a key stakeholder within the private sector, Sonoco is taking steps to re reaffirm its commitment to growing employment and entrepreneurship in Sierra Leone. With that, we are happy to announce the launch of our Bread Avenue Academy in conjunction with NCTVA. We are committed to the future of the continent, investing in Africa, creating employment opportunities, encouraging entrepreneurship, and helping to drive economic growth. Investing in the youth is an investment in Africa's future. AfriCell is also one of the sponsors that joined hands to support and guide the youth 
on their path to success. Shadi Jajawi is the CEO of Afrocell Sierra Leone. Already at Afrocell, we are one of the largest employers in the country. We have about 1,000 direct staff, apart from the thousands of contractors and subcontractors that work with us. We have a need for employees the same way that employees have a need for employment. It's a two-way uh, relationship. And we look forward to continuous engagement in such program so that we will always have great staff to come and join Apricel in the future. When you want something, you don't sit and wait for it. When you want something, you get up and you work hard for it. Everyone needs to work hard to wherever they want to go so that they leave where they are behind. The 2023 National Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Fair is not just an event, it's a movement towards a brighter and prosperous future. The four days will focus on learning, skills development, networking, career advice, and connecting young job seekers to 50 employers. Sally Fuchurna Kamara, AYV News. Africa Young Voices Media Empire and the National Union of Sierra Leone Students News has organized an audition for the beauty queens that will represent their universities in this year's AYVN News Smith University. Now our entertainment reporter Hannah Yangsin put together this story. The search is on for the next AYV Miss University as 15 ladies auditioned from different universities across the country. The judges swear Ness Abdullahi, manager of Miss Sierra Leone Amina Sabangura, former Miss Tourism Aja Tigidanke, head of the department at the Blue Cross School of Fashion, Matilda Ekwatawai, Miss University African Focal Person Ivy Bondo, and former Miss Sierra Leone 2018 singer Laura Solomon. They encourage the ladies who auditioned to be brave. There is so much more you can take from this. Your journey has started today. Go continue being yourselves. Go continue doing more learning, more research, more self-awareness studies. Build your confidence. And the world will be your what? Your what? Your stage. Your stage. Speaking on the importance of AYV Miss University, and of entertainment at the AYV Media Empire, Olainka Olukolia has this to say. Today, we officially begin the search for the 2023-2024 Beauty with Brains that will represent Sierra Leone in the next Miss University Africa. As you today showcase your talents in front of the carefully selected judges, please remember that no matter the outcome of today's results, you're all winners and you're all considered queens. And we at AYV appreciate you for your participation. Miss University is an annual event organized by the African Young Voices Media Empire. And this year is no exception as AYV Media Empire is doing it together with the National Union of Sierra Leone Students. And it will be happening on the 1st of December, 2023 at Radisson Blue Hotel in Greetown. Anna Yangsin, AYV ENT News, Greetown. Now, following the enactment of Sierra Leone's Finance Act 2024, some citizens have expressed dissatisfaction, noting that it will add more burden to the hardship already faced by many in the country. They say government introducing additional taxes on essential commodities, most notably rice, is bad for the poor masses. Mariam Asanikorma was there in our report. The move to tax essential commodities, including rice, has been met with widespread disapproval from various sectors. Many citizens argue that taxing essential commodities like rice disappropriately affects low-income households, threatening food security and placing an additional strain on already tight budgets. So we don't have this feed salon. But how now we can tax 2024 when we are dying? We are dying. What about the parliamentary parliamentarians that they pay over almost billions of loans? Why would I not reduce panel money and, 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 and slaughter in for that we able to sustain this country? For sir, uh, it's actually very discouraging to me and sad. Why is this guy talking here? Because if parliamentarians go to the law, they make law, because then they get free money. 
Now maybe they go make that kind of day. Then now we even now we tax no day. People they destroy, people they suffer. Neither we will sit up for go make law say because they want feed salon. Neither they go put law there. That means to say by the time they defeat salon, we all don't die with starvation. Yes. So like me, so me no we can sit up and talk say I support this kind of thing. We for be nationalistic. You know, she say because of today you don't get, so the other people them whether they give you power, you go suppress and let them die. We all what you call the rest more. They call me and call her, like you go to almost million, no one know. The rest more. They are, they are sorry for we let you not get taxed. If you get taxed, you go pass, you go so far, you get for you picking the day. You know, now, 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 say all the rest this way, more than all able buy have bag rest. But what are citizens' expectation from government? Let the hang on our force until agriculture begin producing at this country. You will not, will not look how people that they suffer. Petrol down, everything don't work. We did be here because why? We want let low get and turn let they change situation. But they're not going. We're not going to expect say that for change situation they go out law their way. Like me, so me no one here. He said they talk than this. The government continue to make it easy for we don't say the rest or the flour or the oil or the sugar or they not forget tax. No left and so for we force. No they manage we safe. We don't need any tax on rice. We don't need any tax on foodstuff. The amendments to the Finance Act highlight the challenge of finding a balance between economic plan and the well-being of the majority. As Sierra Leoneans discuss the aftermath of this law, questions linger about how the government will respond to citizen concerns and whether there will be efforts to address the impact of the new taxes on everyday items. Mariama Sonikuruma, AYV News, Freetown. However, Matthew Dinge, the financial secretary at the Ministry of Finance, says the new Finance Act will enable government to generate revenue and support food production in the county. The financial secretary was speaking on the 2024 finance bill, bill that was passed in the well of parliament, which proposed new taxes and fiscal adjustment that aims at enhancing revenue mobilization and improving the economic growth of the county. Edima Conte has more. In 2024, the government of Sierra Leone aims to roll out the Financial Act, which will introduce new tax regime on essential commodities like 5% tax on imported rice, 20% on imported cement, 10% on iron rods, and 5% on cooking gas. Sierra Leone, being a food deficit country, relies heavily on rice as a staple food for most citizens. The importation of 5% duty on rice is anticipated to hike in the price on food. However, when these percentages take effect on basic commodities in the country, many citizens will feel the crunch of it, especially the low income earners in the country. Matthew Dingin, the Financial Secretary at Ministry of Finance, says the Financial Act is for governments to generate revenue for food production in the country. Definitely, once you improve, you impose the tax. I'm no, I know specifically you're referring to the rice. Um, the price will go up, and everybody will say, "Oh, the price has gone up," and things like that. But what they are not looking at, they are not comparing it against what it should have been if the tax is not there. From 2009 to now, when taxes on rice were zero that has not stopped the price of rice from going up since then so there are lots of incentives in this finance act and at the same time there are measures there for government to raise revenue which government will use to support like food production in the country we know the challenges we are having with food scarcity in the country and government wants to create the enabling environment for the private sector to come in and invest so that we can produce our own food and we we, the citizens will have enough food to, to eat and bring the cost down. Speaking on proposed financial act, Abubakar Kamara, the national coordinator for Budget Advocacy Network, noted that the government of Sierra Leone should adjust on its expenditures. Absolutely, government can do more in terms of, especially at a particular point in time like this, when things are hard, mm -hmm. government can make some stringent measures on the part of themselves for ensure, say, they control expenditure, that is one, but also again, if you control expenditure, those expenditure not affect the most um, um, vulnerable. At this particular point in time, what things are difficult, government will also readjust some of the some of these spending. What we feel say, if they not take place, they not go affect the operations and they not go affect the ordinary people and livelihood. Many people are with the belief that stakeholders in the parliament will look into the nitty gritty of the bill and make the necessary inputs. Edima Conte, AYV News, Freetown. 
Director of Training and Strategy in the Sierra Leone Parliament, Mohamed Alpha Jallo, has called for a strategic plan to address human trafficking in the county. He made this call during a day anti-human trafficking training for members of parliament for a strategic plan to put an end to human trafficking in Sierra Leone. Christina Maria Mabangura reports. Human trafficking as a form of present-day slavery involving the illegal transport of individuals by force or trick for the purpose of labor, sexual abuse, or activities in which others benefit financially. Human trafficking can lead to loss of basic human rights, loss of one's childhood, break in families, and severe mental health consequences, including concern disorders and substance abuse. Director for Training and Strategy in Parliament, Mohamed al Jallo, said that the need for a strategic human trafficking. Organize it in for our members of parliament. You know, we have a lot of new members of parliament, but also there are old members of parliament who also need information on anti-human trafficking. You realize they completed a baseline survey in 2020-2021 and it brought some highlights that are very, very important for members of parliament to know. There are hotspot um, districts in this country wherein um, child trafficking is very, very, very high. Districts like Kono, districts like Kenema, and Kono, Kenema, and Kailan. So we realize that that is very helpful information for members of parliament to know. Umar Fofana, county coordinator, APIS, explains the purpose of the trainings for members of parliament to enhance the capacity of MPs to integrate the lawmaking processes. So what we want to know is how could parliament integrate human trafficking in their daily work, for example, in their oversight programs, in their representation and lawmaking processes. Parliament has recently enacted or reviewed and amended the 2005 Anti-Trafficking Act. So in 2022, we had the Anti-Trafficking and Migrant Smuggling Act, which is very good, and it's currently in implementation. Deputy Whip for the Opposition, Honorable Abdul Karim Kamara, emphasized on how human trafficking has become so common in Sierra Leone. Um, well, it is common because we have very few urban cities in Sierra Leone and where you can get social amenities and where you can access governmental um, opportunities like universities, good schools, medical facilities. We run a country that is almost centralized. Whatever you want, you have to come to Freetown to get the best of it. Christiana Mariam Abangura, AYV News and Freetown. Joining the Global Action and Cybercrime Extended Action, the National Cyber Security Coordination Center in Sierra Leone has hosted a workshop on the role of policymakers and raising awareness on the Cybercrime Convention. Now, the workshop, which brought together key players in the security, justice, and lawmaking sectors, seeks to provide insights into the Budapest Convention and its second additional protocol, identifying challenges in enforcing the Cybersecurity and Crime Act and offer sustainable recommendations. Renaja Morove has more on the story. With the introduction of new technologies, the world is witnessing new criminal opportunities through computers, network, and other devices, dubbed as cybercrime, the new global threat. Thus, countries around the globe are developing legislations to addressing these new challenges. Sierra Leone in 2021 enacted the Cybersecurity and Crime Act as commitment to addressing this new wave of crime. Aligning these acts with international laws, the country requested to be acceded to the Budapest Convention and its additional protocols, a request which was granted in February of this year. This workshop seeks to provide insight into the Budapest Convention and its second additional protocol, identify challenges and gaps in enforcing cybercrime security and crime act. As a nation dedicated to combating cybercrime and standing international cooperation, Sierra Leone requested to accede to the Budapest Convention and its additional protocols. And in 2021, but what's the current cyber crime landscape in the country and challenges of criminal justice system? 
as it is, we have challenges in the criminal justice system. Many challenges. We know that. From bail to evidence gathering to investigation by the police, we have lots of those. And to make it worse, we now have additional challenges that are brought about by cybercrime, which in itself has its own challenges and complexities, and together they have added or compounded the existing criminal justice system problems. The Budapest Convention remains to be the only legal binding international instrument on cybercrime that provides framework for harmonized definition in criminalizing cybercrime conduct as well as procedure measures for law enforcement authority. You to seize money, you had the power to confiscate money, but you didn't have this concept of freezing the bank account, but this is very new. And for that, you had to bring in new legislation. You have to make amendments into your law. Because when you're dealing with new types of crimes and new threats that are emerging, you need to give the law enforcement and the authorities new powers to deal with it. In the same vein, in the same way, when you deal with cybercrime and electronic evidence, you have the same problem, and so you need to also have new procedural powers by which you have in your law. Being part of this treaty does not only promote international collaboration in the fight against cybercrime, it also enhances capability of law enforcement agency and facilitates the exchange of best practices. This is part of steps by the country to being part of the international cooperation in the fight against cybercrime. Ronald Joe Moruvia, AYV News, Freetown. Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament, Honorable Sidi Mohamed Tunis, has arrived in Tangier, Kingdom of Morocco, for the 15th edition of the Medays Forum. The forum will focus on the cross-cutting theme of polycrisis, polyward. Well, the speaker will participate in a panel discussion titled Separatism, Terrorism, Interference and Political Instability in Africa, Getting Out of This Terrible and Fatalistic Nexus. The panel aims to address the complex and interconnected challenges Africa is currently facing. Let's take the highlight. All right, now still in the news, the Australian chapter to the West African Insurance Companies Association, WICA, has hosted this year's annual general meeting and education conference on the theme, Aligning Insurance Practice in the 21st Century to Serve Public and Private Sectors at Zagunda Hall in Freetown. The well, president of the West African Insurance Companies Association, Eddie Efukoha, says part of their mission is to educate members on the current environments that affect the business sector. Our reporter Issa Bangura has more. Established in 1973, the West African Insurance Companies Association was formed to address the lack of reinsurance capacity in the West African insurance industry. This year, the focus on the theme aligning insurance practice 
in the 21st century to serve public and private sectors, brought the conference to Sierra Leone. President Edi Ifekoha emphasized that this event aims to promote gender awareness and advocacy within the sector. Is that, uh, as part of uh, uh, First of all, the body of the association was created in order to deepen the shorts uh, within the sub region, within the rural state of West African countries. And currently, there are five countries that make up this uh, association. And leadership amongst uh, the, uh, the association is rotated on a year to year basis amongst members of uh, these countries. So we rotate our conferences, and these conferences, uh, as we rotate it, engender uh, awareness uh, as to the values and the functions of short and also helps us to uh, raise some advocacy within the government sector so that uh, we will to support the business. Raymond Macaulay, Managing Director of Orel Insurance Company Limited in Sierra Leone, elaborated on some educational aspects of the conference. The theme for the conference is aligning our profession. Um, 21st century development so as to be fit and proper to operate in both public and private sectors. So that's basically the thing for this conference. So we have, you know, lots, lots of speakers, presenters, discussants that will be uh, speaking of various areas related to governance. New financial reporting standard that will be operational next year, the IFRS standard that will be operational next year, as well as a customer's perspective on insurance and how we can be fit and proper to it. The commitment to provide reinsurance capacity using motivated personnel and advanced technologies to deliver exceptional client service while creating shareholder value underscores the conference. Significance is Abangora, AYV News, Freetown. Now this is Primetime News and AYV Television and Radio. We'll be back with more stories after this break. Welcome to Central University's Nursing Department, where your journey to fulfilling nursing career begins. A comprehensive program is designed to equip you with the skills and knowledge needed in the nursing field. Our experienced faculty is committed to providing you with the best education and training. We're proud of our partnership with Trent University in Canada, offering our students a global perspective. Canadian students will come to Sierra Leone, they will have a transformative experience, they'll see the beauty of the country, the potential of the country, and the incredible talent of the, of the people here. And I hope that for Sierra Leonean students who come to Canada, that they'll see why Canada is different from the US. <laughs> Join us at Central University's nursing department and unlock your potential for greatness.